Welcome back to RGR Football. This is it. This is week four. We're going to get you ready for it. This is the game plan. Dan and I are going to go through our thoughts about how you attack the New England Patriots that aren't the New England Patriots anymore, right? Well, they still are. Bill Belichick's there. He is the New England Patriots. I get, you know, Tom Brady is, you know, the quarterback. But for the most part, they, uh, they're they going to keep winning games because – Bill Belichick is Bill Belichick, and that's just the kind of how it is. <laughs> well, and you know, I, I kind of lean that way too. I just they look different with Cam running it, but that brings us to something real quick, folks. Dan Harms, Arrowhead guys, if you don't know, um, <laughs> click the sub, the like, and the bell <laughs> notification before I forget to say that because I do it every time we get talking. But tell me this, like the whole conversation about was it Brady or was it Belichick? Like, does do we have an indication yet in your mind? I think we do. He's morphing, and I mean, granted, it's also a little bit of Josh Daniel McDaniel's, who's doing an excellent job morphing this, you know, offense around Cam Newton. They're very fluid. We've seen a bunch of different game plans, uh, offensive styles from Tom Brady and their offense. The way they've, you know, brought in guys like Randy Moss and, and Gronk, and they've had a bunch of different ways to make an offense around Tom Brady different. You know, that either they, they can throw the ball a lot, they've been able to run the football effectively. So for me, it's it's Bill Belichick. And it, you can see it now is they're still going to win games with their defense and and adapting their gameplay to a different quarterback. In this case, it's Cam Newton. Granted, I think we may have seen a bit of a different offense with Jarrett Stidham, maybe not as explosive. They may have lost by more points against Maybe not an points. offense. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> They may have had to sell the farm and go get somebody else had Jared yeah. Stenham been the quarterback. But, you know, I think for me, it's it's Bill Belichick just looking at the way he the way he's adapted the offense differently and can still win with a bunch of different guys in de at the defensive level. So that's yeah. just my own thing. Some things are the same, and I agree with you. I, t I have always tended to think towards Belichick being – the force that was driving all those championships. And I, I, I give you two. Um, McMinnie was here in Denver when I lived here and I was not impressed. No, not, not just that thing on Thursday night or Thanksgiving football or whatever. He's just trying to win a game. Yes. I still have that clip somewhere. <laughs> folks. Um, but beyond that, like I just felt like it was again, mini Belichick trying to take new England somewhere else. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work anywhere. Yeah. It never has. It's still but, <laughs> right. But to give him credit, what he's been able to do in-house, I think, honestly, becoming a head coach, coming back, being a coordinator, being able to adapt. And Cam is obviously a completely different quarterback than Tom Brady was. But I think they've done a, a miraculous job of keeping, what, maybe 75, 80 percent of the offense the same yeah, in terms of their personnel groups, the way they line up, the things that they attack, but adding what Cam does best. And that's honestly where I think that they can make some hay here against the Chiefs because it's it's not what the Chiefs expected from this team. Exactly. And I was actually originally going to this game. I had tickets bought and everything. Mm -hmm. And then we found out my wife's deploying, and I'm just like, well, no, not anymore. <laughs> I had to right. sell the tickets. Uh, but and, and then finding out that Cam Newton's going to be the quarterback, it made things a bit more – want you know, I wanted to go and see this game, especially after the Baltimore game. You know, you've got Baltimore, then you have – the Patriots coming in and I, you know, I, I tweeted out that this could be a type of classic trap game in the sense that you're coming off a high emotion game that you're really had circled on your, your schedule. We all know that the chiefs wanted to beat Baltimore and beat them down after everyone keeps talking about them and not the chiefs, which is kind of how it seems to go. And now that the chiefs have now done that and they can move on to the Patriots. I'm looking forward to seeing if they come out with the same fire that they did against the you know, the Ravens, if we see something to the effect of what they had, what happened to the chargers, things may be a little bit different in terms of the outcome, maybe closer to what we saw at the chargers, but I don't know. What do you expect out of uh, the chiefs offense this, uh, this week? You know, the, the offense, I think I'm not worried about at all. Um, yes, there are things there, but like, there's no high tower who gave Pat problems. There's no, um, who was it uh, coming off the edge? Uh, He's in Detroit now. He oh, there's, a, there's flowers. There's family. right flowers. Is the guy I'm thinking of. You yeah. know, so like that's not what I'm concerned about. It's just the fact, like you were saying, coming off of of the Ravens, of the way that Lamar attacks you, the fact that it's more run based, and I think at least there's more of a fear factor against the run than there is the pass from Lamar. Whereas Cam, I'm not sure that's the same. Yeah. And I will tell you this too. It's similar. They played run fits well. They they cordoned Lamar well. But like you said, sustaining that for another four quarters is another thing. And the difference to me is Cam will put his shoulder down and run you over. 
he's still got that size. As long as his foot's good, that's a problem. And yeah. so it's not just Dorian trying to scramble and keep up with him. It's got to be somebody bigger. I think Mil- Willie might play because of that this week. Yeah, I think – I mean, we saw him more when they were in base last week. He definitely got some more snaps. I think it was at Will. I believe that we saw Wilson at uh, Sam a lot with of the Sam. time he was on the field. Um, so – that's going to be something that I look forward to too, because he's got that speed that Dorian O'Daniel does, but he's what, like 40 pounds heavier than, than Dorian O'Daniel, maybe a little bit more. He's much bigger. So that would be the linebackers are going to have to get to him, and bring him down. And if they don't, he's going to turn maybe what it's going to be the same kind of thing with Lamar when turning smaller gains into big gains, except he's going to run you over instead of, instead of making you miss I mean, He still can make you miss, but it's not the same. It's not the same as Lamar. But yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take uh, this, this defense is gonna take some hits from this this offense. I think they're gonna try and ground pound them just like you know the text the, ty- the Titans would or the, the Ravens. So I think that coming off of that game God, does give them a little bit of experience. You know, they just they just saw the Ravens try and ground pound them with you know Mark Ingram and their tight ends and that kind of thing. So hopefully they keep that same energy going into this game. It's home. And they're going to have some fans in the stands, which could definitely help the energy level as well. I think so too. And I, I think when you when you look at the opposite, I think it's going to be a harder day for the offense, only because I still think there's plenty yeah. of things to exploit. You know, like we, we'll talk about some of the key matchups here in a second. But in general, Belichick learned he's going to give you a zero blitz or two, mm-hmm. but he's not going to do what the Ravens are. He's not going to blitz you all day. He's yeah. learned his lesson. He did that two years <laughs> ago and it didn't work. And that's the thing that I think the coaching makes the bigger difference here. Uh, without Hightower in particular, I think you're a little bit softer in the middle. I think you can attack that. I think the safeties are not playing up to their normal level. Uh, Jason certainly isn't. Uh, yeah. Devin is. I'll give Devin all the credit. He's back there doing his thing. But when you look at the McCourty brothers as a pair, I think they're starting to diverge a little bit. And I feel like yeah. Jason's falling off. I would be attacking that middle ground again with Kelsey, whoever they choose not to double. And yeah. that's, that's probably my question for you. Who do you think they double? Uh, are they going to, for me, it's, they're going to bracket Tyreek Hill. They're going to bracket Tyreek. I feel like that that's just the way that he's figured out. Look, I can't let Tyreek get any single coverage in these games. I just can't let it happen because he's burned him multiple times. You know, even, you know, McCall Hardman did last year. For, so he's, he's, he's got some issues with trying to figure out these speed guys. But, you know, we know that he's probably going to put Stefan Gilmore on Sammy Watkins. That, that's typically what he likes to do. And then, like you said, he'll either bracket or double Kelsey and or um, Hill. But he's going to have some issues with that, without Hightower covering you know, Travis Kelsey. So they're going to probably attack the middle of the field with Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins. I expect him to be able to get open a little bit more because to me this season, he's looked a little bit better running his routes than he has in previous years to this point in the season. You know, last week they, they look to get him more in, in that intermediate space, not necessarily for run after catch ability, but just to get five, six, seven, eight yards and then get down. That's, they can do that with a guy, even with uh, Stefan Gilmore, you can, use some of those whip routes, any of those little in routes that he runs really well that, to get him open in the sp- in space. And, you know, he can just – they can just keep moving the chains like that. So, um, for me, I'm attacking, like you said, the middle of the field, and then you're going to throw Clyde edwards Hilaire in there as well against some of those linebackers that maybe don't have what, top, you know, Hightower has. He was such a big part of that linebacking crew, and it's, it's going to be a bit of an interesting, you know – Watch to see what Bill Belichick does. Maybe he rotates more um, of his defensive lineman back. Sorry about that. My dog is uh, barking at, at nothing like she typically does. So. <laughs> Mine are around here too. So three things that you just brought up that hit me. A, you're right. Sammy, I think, is better uh, in and out of his routes this year. And I think that's honestly because he was healthy a lot more last season than he was the year before. And he appears, even though he got a little dinged up with the concussion, Physically, his lower body looks like he's physically better this year, too. Another year yeah, where he's not dealing with, with all the adhesions and all the things that, that soft tissue is gets bothersome about. So that's one thing. I think Stefan Gilmore is not playing as well as he did last year. Uh, I've talked to several people that covered the team out in Boston, and they're not seeing the same guy. Now, I'm not saying that he's you know fallen off and he, he can't be he's still better than <laughs> most of the league but yeah. he's not what he used to be at least so far this season maybe that's rust there are some veterans that have trouble getting into this season with no preseason but much like we saw sammy against richard sherman last year 
in that Super Bowl. I, I don't see any reason if, if he can't if he can dissect Sherman that way, I don't see why he can't do it to Gilmore, especially on the underneath routes, which brings me to that thing that, yeah, take the underneath. Pat did a good job of when he had opportunities to just take short gains in order to move the sticks. That's what he did. And that, again, allows CEH. And specifically, I usually like CEH running down the middle behind Kelsey, something like that. Yeah. But right now, with the ground that they have to cover, I want to see the swings in the wheels. I want to see him out towards the edges near the sideline Get that ball to him and see what he can do. Yeah, I like watching that. It was like a corner route that he ran against uh, his his old teammate, Patrick Queen, where he runs right. into him, essentially sets him up, waiting for that contact, and then just quicks outside to the – and just creates all that separation. We can see that a, a bunch in this game. And we all know that they've had a success in the past against this Patriots defense with wheel routes. You know, Kareem Hunt, multiple wheel route touchdowns in this, yep. this matchup. They can do that again with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So that's just another element that they're going to have to look out for. And if you can start hitting on some of these out routes, these swing routes, they're going to have to figure out who's going to go where on him. And that's going to, again, open people up like Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins over the middle. They just, like you said, it, this offense should be fine. Like they've got so many different weapons. And I mean, what do you do? You know, R R Richard Sherman said it earlier this week. It's not pick your poison. It's pick how you die. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I hadn't seen that. That's a pretty good way to put it. But uh, there's, there's obviously a way that you, you're going to game plan. They're going to game plan for you. But yeah. when you look at the opposite side, it's the running backs that killed everybody last week for the Patriots. And that's definitely something the Chiefs have had trouble with. Yeah. I find it interesting as I watch the film. And I know, folks, if you missed Dan's film review, uh, this was a fun one. It's in the title, too, because <laughs> they had a lot of fun. Um, go check that out, because there's a lot of little nuggets in there. Eric Bieniemy talked about the fact the offense still has plenty of trick plays, so they're not worried about it. But one thing that I really liked about what Spags did, he wasn't afraid to go to four safety. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you call that diamond or whatever you call that. It doesn't matter to me. It's awesome. Normally, I would say that's not something that you want to do against some wide receivers and some running backs. But given the fact that you might not be ready to have Willie as the only linebacker out there, and we know that these running backs can run away from Anthony Hitchens. Yep. I don't want to see Neiman out there by himself either because he's not quite as quick as Hitchens is either. So no. there's a, a there's definitely an aspect that we could see four safeties out there again. My takeaway was that I thought Tedrick Thompson played a good game. He looked like he was in solid position all the time. He had a big hit, but that's not really what took it away from me. It's the fact that I didn't notice him getting his butt kicked the exactly. rest of the game. Yeah, no, I was I watched the game over again. I'm like, you know. When he came over from Seattle, he was largely a, a busted player that didn't fit in Seattle system. They couldn't figure out how to make him work. A guy that with a lot of speed that just didn't seem to fit in, you know, a good defense who is sy systemically anyway. They don't necessarily have a good defense this year. It looks <laughs> quite terrible, to be honest with you. Um, and I would just like to apologize to Willie Sneed. And then Darius <laughs> Need and Willie Gay because I confused all their names when I was talking because they're all on the same side of the ball at the same time. So I apologize for my video about that. Um, I just I knew I was going to. There was Willies, there's Sneeds. It was just all confusing. They're everywhere. It's a triangle. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's go back to uh, Tedder Thompson, who really he looked really good. And this it just I think it goes to show you that they're bringing in players. And they're able to coach him up. This coaching staff is doing wonders with everybody that they've brought in. They've they made everybody kind of do exactly what they do well, and they've made it better. You know, Mike Pinnell, tra journeyman, comes in. He's able to, to establish himself as a run, stu run stuffer, and he was a key cog in the Super Bowl winning team. It, it just – I love how they brought all these different guys in after they fired Bob Sutton, and they were just like, look, we're going to make everybody – Brand, brand new coaching staff, essentially. All of you are gone. We're going to bring new guys in. We're going to just make sure you guys coach up and teach them what to do. You know, K-Pass is learning more than he ever had in his, what, three years with under Bob Sutton. Mm -hmm. They're developing players at an awesome, you know, an awesome rate. And I think that you're seeing it again with Tedrick Thompson, who's playing very well. And I think that he's going to get more snaps going forward. Well, and that brings me to your guy. Because K-Pass is going to be the starter. I don't think Alex Oakford is going to get the start. No. If they find that they want to start doing a lot of drops or sending just three-man rushes or whatever, maybe he gets in there. But I think they're going to take it easy on his leg. Um, but that means Mike Dana plays more. And I've been really impressed with him. And I know you're into him because, you know, a Michigan thing. But he's Love also got probably the best lineup ma matchup against the offensive line of New England. That is uh, Emmanuel uh, – no, Jermaine Illuminor. I think that's how you say it. I think that's how you say it. But, I mean, 
God. I watched him last week. You can jack him up. You can duck under him and go around. You can spin back to the end. You can do whatever you want, Mike Danny. You could have a day. <laughs> I really hope that's the case because, you know, he's going to get a, ro- get a good amount of rotation work in there. But really what I want to see is K-Pass chasing down Cam Newton. Those two physical specimens, just right. I want a piece of it out of those two. That would be a lot of fun. You know, I, I, I think that these – the defensive ends for the Chiefs match up really well against the Patriots offensive line and Cam Newton. He's not as fast as Lamar Jackson, obviously. So that does give them a little bit more, you know, ability to get there. I think Taco Charlton's filled in really well. He's he's played better than I I think a lot of people expected, considering he started the season inactive. Mm-hmm. So he, he's come in and played pretty well. Um, Mike Dan, a rookie fifth round draft pick, is has exceeded a lot of people's expectations. But like I said, if you go back. To his Central Michigan tape, this is all – it's all there. Yep. He, he's an incredible athlete for a guy his size. He's able to sit, step down and um, be a defensive tackle as well as work on the outside with all of his abilities to process and his his intelligence is all – it's all showing. And I think that you're only going to see him grow from this point on. There's a reason they wanted to draft him in the fifth round, and they did. And it's really paying off for him. Yeah. And whether it's the linebackers or use more safeties to cover the backs, I think that's something that they're going to want to do. It's not a wide receiver heavy offense. No. Like they don't have the talent to really exploit, but the Chiefs are down as well. I expect Fenton to play outside and I expect Tyron to go back into the nickel like he did last week. Over 60% of his snaps taken from the nickel. I think that's fine. But are you worried at all about the the thing just not holding together for either Fenton or Ward coming back? He got forced into playing snaps. I think he's okay. Yeah. But do you have trepidation about the corners? Um I don't think that the Patriots have any speed guys. I don't. I think they got rid of their last one. So that's that, that, that's the only thing that would give me a little bit of pause because we saw it last week when uh, Legereus Seed went out. They did take more deep shots, and Hollywood Brown got a couple steps on on Cam or uh, Traverius Ward as well as Rashad Fenton. A bad ball really thrown on both of them. He couldn't come. They couldn't come down with them. Uh, so that's the only pause that I have. Otherwise, that they're going to be fine on the outside. They can they can play press as long as they're they're containing you know the outside deep threats. They're not going to have any issues. Um, Kim's going to wing some balls in into some tight spaces. I would imagine that's just kind of what he does. He's got the, he's got a cannon. So um, you're going to have to live and die with that kind of stuff. I think Edelman's still going to be. A factor in the short to intermediate parts of the field. He's not not by any means a field stretcher. So right. it's like I said, I don't, from my knowledge of the of the uh, the Patriots offense, I don't see much speed there, and that's been one of the biggest problems with their offense this entire season. You know, they put up a lot of points on Seattle, but they have a terrible defense, and you're going to put up points on Seattle. Um, they don't have anyone that can stretch the field, so you shut down that run game for the most part, and you're going to force Cam Newton to try to win a game throwing 10, at 10, 15 yards at the most down the field. I think they yeah. can do that. Well, and Edelman's Edelman. He's gotten yeah. this team in the past, but I do think what it comes down to me is guarding him. It should be Tyron. It will be Tyron. Tyron's going to get a chance at a couple of different balls. I think he'll come down with one. It might be the turn point in the game. At the end of the day, I see this not – terribly close i'm gonna call it 35 27 what do you think so if you guys watched the game last last from last week they were afraid of tyron matthew they were afraid of him after the first drive they they went over to him a couple times and he shut everything down he was there immediately he did not want to go back over there he it was that's just how it was um I don't I don't think I think this game looks a little bit closer than the Ravens did I mean even though they got close that game never felt like it was Jeopardy. close to what the score was. I think the Patriots will will do a good job keeping it a little bit closer in a feel sense for you know fans watching as well as the team. And that will also hopefully help them a little bit more keep the, the pedal down. I do think they score over 30 points again. It just um I know we, we continue to to predict that they score over 30 points, but this is the best offense in the NFL. Like I feel like if you pre- Dick, that they're not going to score 30 points, you're doing themselves a disservice. Like, what? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say 31 20. 31 20. Okay, rock on. I'll take that. Folks, that's what we think. Let us know down in the comments what you think. Give us a prediction. Give us your thoughts, whatever. Just give us that like and the sub and the bell yeah. notification. That'll help too. Uh, we'll be back post game uh, because it's an afternoon game. I'll do the regular, you know, live my notes or whatever. Dan will be back right away with, with film as always. We'll do our normal thing on the stats. 
just like every week. We're hitting our groove now, as long as we don't have too many yeah. more primetime games. Um, but sure hey, <laughs> hey, we're gonna keep churning it out, and it's not gonna be always Dan on offense and me on defense. I swear, I'm we're gonna, gonna mix it up. I'm probably gonna, I think I'm probably to continue to do offense and defense every week, as long as I don't mix up the names like I did last week. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's only two sneeds. It's okay. <laughs> That's it for us today, folks. Hope you enjoy your weekend in this game plan. Leave that thumb up. Enjoy the game. We'll talk to you afterwards. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.